Hey guys, it's Charles Jager with Metal, and this tutorial we're going to be getting started with Metal's latest plugin, Flux. Flux is a plugin that creates 3D volumetric fractal flames. It's a plugin for After Effects and Premiere Pro, and the fractal flames can be created in rectilinear, flat video, and also in monoscopic or stereoscopic 360 video. The plugin is also GPU accelerated, so you can render these fractal flames very quickly. Now, I do want to emphasize these are true 3D volumetric fractal flames, so you can use this for stereoscopic output and get a 3D effect on your video. The effect is also GPU accelerated, so in terms of creating fractal flames, it's very quick. It's a great plugin for creating space like nebulas, accenting planets, or creating vapors. And you can get some nice animations very quickly with the presets. And if you haven't purchased Flux yet, you can always download a free trial of it from Metal's website and follow along with this tutorial. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump over into After Effects. All right guys, now that we're inside of After Effects, let's go ahead and take a look at everything that's included when you purchase Flux. And two things I want to set up first is the Metal Globe Preview, which is included with Flux, as well as these cool Flux presets. And I'll show you how you can launch and dock each of those. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come over here to Edit, then come down here to Preferences, and then under Video Preview, go ahead and click that. And you want to make sure that Enable Mercury Transmit is checked on, and then go ahead and check on the Metal Globe Preview as well. And then go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and launch the Metal Globe Preview. So I'll just come here to Window. Then you're going to see Extensions, and then just come here to Metal Globe Preview. And it's going to open up this dockable panel. So I'm just going to dock this right over here. So now we can see a 360 Live Preview of whatever we're working on in After Effects. And you can also see it's easily resizable, so it'll adjust to whatever desktop layout you have. And you can also have that selected and just hit the tilde key on the keyboard. And that'll make that full screen so you can see really up close whatever you're looking at. Now let's go ahead and launch the Metal Flux preset. So back over here at Window, go over to Extensions, then you're going to see Metal Flux Presets. I'll click that, and it's also going to open up a dockable panel. Now you're going to notice that it's grayed out in the beginning. And I'll go ahead and just resize this a little bit more. And the reason for that is you need to have a solid layer selected before you can then click and select on any of these presets. But you can see there's quite a few there. They're grayed out. So let's go ahead and create a composition so we can see these. So I'm going to go to New Composition. And I'm going to create a 360 size composition, so I'll just leave this as Comp 1. It's going to be 4096 by 2048. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'm just going to right click here to create a new solid. And I'll just call this Flux. Make sure I click Make Comp Size just to ensure it's the same size as our comp. And then go ahead and click OK. Now you can see as we have that selected, the Flux presets are now available over here. And you can see there's quite a few of them already in the panel. Now the real magic of the Metal Flux presets in the preset panel is it's going to look at our solid down here in our composition. It's going to look at the length of that solid and it's going to apply an animation from each one of these presets that will be the exact length of that solid. So it's kind of a cool convenience that it does using expressions. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to select on one of these presets. I'll select the first one. And I just click it. Automatically applies the preset to our solid and you can see as I go ahead and select the current time indicator. I'm just going to scroll through here now we can see that animation taking place. And on the Metal Globe Preview, I'm just going to double click into that so we can jump into this in 360. We can actually look around at the 3D volumetric fractal flames that have been created and you can see we're currently inside of them. Now one thing to note, with these fractal flames, they do render very quickly, but a lot of times if you're working in 4K footage, you may want to be working in quarter or half res. But keep in mind, when I go ahead and jump over to full res, you're going to see quite a bit of resolution change. And so you can see these fractal flames are quite detailed. You can see that change that that made. And now you can see over here in the Metal Globe preview, if you're going to be looking at this, you probably definitely want to have it at full. But then when you're working, go ahead and set it back down to half or quarter. Again, depending on the size of your composition. But I'll go ahead and set this back to half. And I'm going to go ahead and do a quick RAM preview so you can see how these flames have been animated. All right, now that preview is done rendering, we can see that animation. And again, this is just a sample of the animations that are created from these Metal Flux presets from the preset panel. And again, this goes the entire length of our solid. And if I go ahead and click on that solid and come here to the effects controls for flux, you're going to see there's some settings here that are red. And those are the expressions that are being applied. They're looking at the length of our solid and applying those animation presets. Now let's go ahead and apply the effect directly. So I'm going to come here to metal flux and I'm just going to go ahead and delete that effect. And if we come over here to the effects panel, if we come down here to metal and then just come here, you're going to see metal flux. Now it's important to know when you first apply the effect, you won't see anything at all. And that's because we actually need to go ahead and set up our flux animation. And I'm going to walk you guys through that process. But one place you can start very quickly is over here in the presets. You'll see quite a few different presets over here as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on this solar wind preset. 
Now it's important to note with these presets here, these do not animate. So that's kind of what differentiates the presets here that you can apply very quickly to those over here in the Flux Presets panel. The ones from the Presets panel will have animation and the ones over here, you can go ahead and set up the animation yourself. Especially when you're first starting out with Flux, I highly recommend starting off some of the presets. It's just gonna get you up and running so much faster. Now let's go ahead and look at the first setting we have, which is frame layout. And of course with Metal's plugins, we have a ton of different frame layouts, even more in Metal Flux. So right now off the default, it's actually set to rectilinear for flat video. If we go ahead and check this down, we have options for monoscopic, we have stereoscopic over under, and now stereoscopic side by side. So I'm gonna change this to monoscopic. And now we can kind of see how this looks. You can see our fractal flames are a little bit further in the distance. So if I look over here on the Metal Globe preview, I can look around and now we can actually see kind of what that looks like. So you can imagine this in a space scene. But what's cool is these are actually in 3D and I can actually move this flux volume anywhere around in this 360. And we'll get to that in just a second. So again, we have these presets here with a lot of different options. You can go ahead and change these at any point in time. So I could change this to electric pulse. And you can see I get a different result. And then I can quickly change back to solar wind if I had that selected. Now again, these options are set up really for convenience and to give you the quickest customization. So the first options we have are evolution X, Y, and Z. And these settings allow you to create a very quick and loopable animation. So you can see I go ahead and scroll through the evolution Y. You can see how this is changing. And again, the cool part of this is it is loopable. So I can apply various changes to each one of these axes on our flux volume. And you, you can see the massive differences that that makes. If I zoom in here, I'm gonna go ahead and change this up to full resolution again, just so we can preview this now at the full quality. And you can see the sharp details we're getting with this fractal volume, it looks quite nice. Going through the settings now, the next one we have is scale. And this is just a global scale for the entire flux volume. And you can increase this, and you can see how it gets kind of closer to our 360 camera here. Uh, at least in the field of view perspective. And then I can also bring the scale down to negative 100. And it's basically just gonna kind of flip and invert that fractal volume. So I'll go ahead and bring this back up to 100. Next we have intensity. And this works very similar to kind of like camera exposure. And you can see how bright our flux volume is right now. If I bring this down, it's gonna kind of help bring down the brightness of everything if you wanna dial it back some. Now one thing that's important to note is that this is very similar to a camera exposure, but you can see when I bring this to zero, it's not completely black. And again, that's because it's taking that intensity from some of the settings we have set over here in our mutations. And so really based off those, we'll kind of determine how it's applied to the intensity. So again, when you bring it all the way to zero, it won't always be black. Next, we have iterations. And this is how many times our fractal is being applied. And really this kind of brings out more and more detail, whatever setting you want to put this on. So I'll zoom in here again, back on our fractal volume and change this to full. And we'll go ahead and adjust the iterations just to kind of see the various differences. So the very basic setting, if I go ahead and take this to one, we may get a result that looks very, very simple or almost just like a glow like we have here. And see what it's doing, it's again, it's like a fractal. You can imagine with something like fractal noise when it's scaled up really high, there's not a lot of detail. But then as it's scaled down, it kind of builds upon itself. That's where a lot of the detail comes out. So I'm gonna set this to be four now. We'll take a look at what this looks like. And you can start to kind of see the basis of our current flux fractal volume. And now I'll change this up to 12 like it was. And then I may even increase this all the way to 20 for kind of some really hyper detail here. And you can kind of see the results we're getting there. So it looks really cool. And just by tweaking and altering the iterations, you can get varied results. So I'm gonna set this back to the default of 12. Next we have the mutations. And these are really what comprise the flux volume. These are the different layers we've kind of added in here to create what you see on screen right now. So if we didn't have a preset selected, this would probably be where you wanna start at first. So I'm gonna check down mutation, and now you can see a ton of different options we have. So off the default, when you apply flux, the mutation one won't be enabled. So I actually need to go ahead and enable that mutation. And then you can come in here and apply the different settings to that. I won't go over all of these settings, but you can see how much customization you can apply to each one of these mutations. Let's go ahead and look at the different variations we have. Currently it's set at spherical for this preset, but I could easily change this to one of these others. You can see how that drastically changes the look of this preset. So again, you can just tweak these and get varied results quite quickly. Same thing applies for the color. I can go ahead and select this color. And again, depending on how this mutation is applying and blending with the other colors, it will definitely alter the results you're getting. And you can see as I go ahead and kind of tweak this, I'm gonna jump over here to one of the other mutations. Let's find the one that's probably red, which might be this one. I'll alter the color on this as well. And we can see how that's gonna quite change everything. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click OK for that color. And again, we have other options like brightness, scale, and those others through here. So I'm going to close up that mutation. 
Let's jump down here to volumetric rendering. And these are options for the actual volume itself, kind of in 3D space. And again, you can adjust the density, which will just adjust everything for this fractal volume, as you can see here with the options. All right, I'm gonna set this back down to half resolution. And let's jump over to 3D transform. And you can see all the different volume settings we have for scale, size, and rotation on each of these axes. If you really wanna get specific on how you wanna customize your flux volume, you can see I can rotate this. And as I do, you can actually see kind of the 3D parallax for the volume itself, which is quite cool. We also have the volume position. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna zoom out here. And you can see if the volume was further away from the camera, we can move it up. If I wanted to actually be in the center of it, I could just move it back here in the negative. And you can see it's almost like we're flying through that kind of space nebula right now with this fractal volume. I'll go ahead and change this to full. And let's go over here and jump over to the Metal Globe Preview. And I'm gonna click that and hit the tilde key. And we can click and just look around and see the crazy results we're getting from this. And I'll go ahead and jump back out of that. I'm gonna change this again back to half. Next we have settings for the camera. Now this is really gonna pertain if you are gonna be using uh, metal flux with a rectilinear view or with a stereoscopic view. It really won't affect that much if you're using a monoscopic view. But if I go ahead and change this over here back to rectilinear, we zoom out here, you can see it can actually adjust the camera field of view and what we're actually seeing on screen. Because obviously if we're looking at this with a monoscopic, we're seeing everything in 360, so we really don't have any reason to adjust the field of view. But if you are working with stereoscopic, I'll just go ahead and click this on over under. You can see we have two different views. You can adjust the stereo interpupillary distance, which is basically the distance between each of the cameras. Off the default, they have it set at a very optimal setting, so you might just wanna leave that as is. And next we have the stereo disparity fade. And that's gonna control if any parts of the fractal are too close to the camera, it'll kind of fade and taper those off so you don't get any unwanted results. Now while I'm actually looking at this, you'll see some of these settings are quite long. So you might wanna make sure you just pull this over and you'll see a few other letters may appear. So again, just make sure you're seeing everything when you're working with Metal Flux. With all these various options, there's definitely a deep dive you can do and tweak everything. Next, you have options for symmetry. And this pretty much does what it looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and change this back now to monoscopic. And you can see if I go ahead and set the symmetry plane to something like X, you'll see how it's gonna kind of repeat the pattern of the fractal flames. You can see how it kind of does that from the top down there. And we have various options we can adjust with that as well. Next, we have options for force field. And this will add another layer into your fractal volume. You can see I can select from a sphere here. It's gonna add a spherical shape. And this will actually kind of distort and change the way the fractals are appearing on screen. And you can see I can fill it with a solid or a shell. And I can come here and I can affect the size of that sphere. You can see how this is actually affecting the volume size there. And again, you have a host of options with that, such as strength. I can go ahead and adjust this. And you can see how that's really affecting everything with that shape. And we have quite a few different shapes you can select from. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Next, you have options to add in lights. If you wanna add in accents onto your flux volume, I can come over here under light one. You can see it's grayed out. I can go ahead and just check it on to enable and then we'll add a light into my volume. And I can go ahead and move this around depending on where I wanna position it. So you can add in lots of various lights and go ahead and tweak the colors of those as well. And you can see how that affects our flux volume. Finally, under advanced, you're gonna see options for ray jittering. Occasionally with flux and with your animations, you might get some jittering or some unwanted artifacts. Go ahead and just adjust the ray jittering and that will hopefully get rid of any artifacting that could be occurring with your flux volume. Finally, we have two more options here for opacity, which will just adjust the overall opacity of the flux volume. And then we also have blending modes that you can select from if you have this applied on top of your footage. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this getting started tutorial for Metal's latest plugin, Flux. Don't forget you can always download a free trial of it from Metal's website. This has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.